You know, uh, I, I kind of feel like we all continue to be wowed by how Kyrie and Katie just keep coming out uh, and putting up numbers. But when you're on the floor and you see them go for, for I think it was 49 that they combined for today, just what is it like when you've got two guys like that able to just be on fire uh, basically at all times? Yeah, I think this is, um, you know, been like this the majority of their career, to be honest. You know, they've been playing at such an elite level. Um, you know, Kevin, 14th year. I'm not sure what year it is for, for Kai, probably like 10. Um, but, yeah, pretty, pretty much the moment these guys have gotten here, this is sort of the, the talent that they've displayed. And they just, you know, even now, late in their careers, continue to get better. And uh, I think it's a testament really just, you know, the work that they put in every day. You know, these guys are, are superstar players, but, um, you know, a lot of you guys haven't been able to come to practice, but you, you just see the, the work that these guys put in. You know, they work, um, you know, as hard as anybody I, I've been around. And, uh, you know, they kind of carry the torch for the rest of the team in that way. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, Joe. Merry Christmas. Last season, when you guys didn't have Katie and Kyrie, you guys would talk a lot about the thin margin ferry you guys had after losses and, and how easy it was for things to fall apart and how much wider that margin ferry would get with Katie and Kyrie back. Is tonight a good example of that, just with how you guys played in the first half and then how the second half looked? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things where first half, uh, everybody is excited. You know, it, it's... Um, you know, even though the atmosphere is not necessarily the same as a normal Christmas Day game, the energy that you have, uh, you know, Boston came out, they kind of punched us in the mouth early. They played physical, they mixed up their defensive coverages, um, and it took us you know, a little bit of time to, to match sort of their intensity and then really sort of supersede it, but then also kind of find ourselves offensively, started getting a rhythm. You know, Kevin got going there early to start the third. Ty continued what he, um, where he left off in the first half. And, you know, the game really just sort of opened up for us on the offensive end. But a lot of it was what we were doing defensively, you know, just being able to get stops, you know, contesting a lot of shots, and then just being able to get out in transition. Tom Dowd, BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Joe, this might be a little similar to Christian's question, but just, you know, first half, Steve talked about you guys being stuck a little bit. And then second half, like you said, KD just kind of comes out and goes. What's the power of a guy like that who gets rolling and then every, everything just kind of flows after that and the whole team kind of gets going? Yeah, um, you know, we, we just are, obviously, again, this is sort of going to be redundant, you know, from now and over the course of the year. We just have two of the most, you know, talented offensive players that have, you know, really ever played in, in the NBA. So, you know, we, you know, you have the luxury of being able to, you know, Kevin may, may not have had it going, you know, his typical self there in the first half, but, you know, second half, he came out, came out rolling um found his rhythm and you know that's what great players do you know you, you don't let you know whatever might have happened prior deter you from staying aggressive and continuing to let you know you know the rhythm and the offense play through you and that's how we have to play in order for us to have success you know we're playing through these guys and you know there are you know there's gonna be times over the course of the season where yeah they're not going to be able to do everything themselves but we have the depth and the capability of other guys being able to step up but again, this is a luxury of having two of the best offensive players that have played. Back to Christian Winfield. Hey, Joe, uh, Steve said at this point the defense is probably a little bit uh, further along than the offense, which is the way he said he likes it. Um, one, do you, do, you get, do you have a similar read on the situation being the defense being further ahead than the offense? And two, how, how does, exactly does that happen, right? Like, is it just like more practice time being, de being dedicated to the defensive end or is it just more intentional? Like, how can the defense be further along? than the offense when you guys have so many capable offensive players on the roster? Um, I think it's just, you know, exactly what you said. So it's one of those things where the, the priority here early on has just been on the defensive end of the ball. So a lot of the stuff that we do in practice, a lot of things that we're watching on film, you know, is, is the stuff defensively. Um, and I think, you know, obviously Steve uh, can elaborate on it a little bit more why he elected to go that way. But we, I think a lot of it is because we have so much, you know, offensive firepower where, um, you know, he's not as concerned with it, where it's one of those things where the offense is going to kind of find its rhythm over the course of the season, where guys are going to figure out playing off of one another, gelling together. And I think, you know, even though defense might be a little bit ahead, I still think that we play really well together and play well off of, of those two guys in particular. 